in practice, it means that certain steps with Hermes on React Native, uh, certain steps are happening ahead of time rather than just in time. And um, if we would break down like all the steps in the pipeline that happen when you run a React Native app, uh, what what steps exactly are you know happening ahead of time, and what what is the rest that is still happening just in time? Yeah, luckily we also have a deck for that. Nice. So as you can see from this from the deck, we have the build time on the left, which is what happened on our machine as developer. And also we have runtime on the right, which is what happened on the user device, which is usually much less powerful than developer's machine. So as for all the modern JavaScript engine, basically the entire compilation is happened just in time. It just in time compile JavaScript to bytecode, then just in time compile the bytecode to machine code. So the first step would be lexing and parsing. So we're trying to parse your source code and find all symbols and functions there and then compile to some unoptimized bytecode. I recommend reading or watching the cost of JavaScript talk or articles from my friend Andy Osmany from Google Chrome to understand the parse plus compile can take 30% 30 30 of the total time spent on JavaScript doing a page load. And Hermes can get rid of this 30%. So, and then this JavaScript engine would execute a bytecode. By execute, I mean interpret. So all modern JavaScript engine like V8, JSC, SpiderMonkey, Chakra has an in interpreter before layer JIT. And then doing the interpretation, some of the function might be called say 10 times, then the base layer JIT is kicked in to compile the unoptimized bytecode to unoptimize the machine code which will be three to five times faster, but the generated code is really huge. And that's why VA want to replace their base JIT, the full code to ignition to reduce memory usage. And then when a function is called 100 or a thousand times and considered super hot, the optimizing JIT will kick in and compile to really compile the unoptimized machine code to some really fast optimized code. In reality, there might be multiple tiers of such optimizing JIT. So these code are really optimized because they made assumption um, in terms of speculative optimization. So there's always risk that the assumption is broken by the dynamic natural of JavaScript. Hence the engine has to fall back to the unoptimized code. This is termed de-optimization. So pay attention to how many variants of copies of your code need to be stored in memory and how many times your code need to be compiled. Compilation is usually super expensive. It takes a lot of CPU cycles and tons of memories to do the work. So that's the current typical modern JavaScript engine pipeline. And for Hermes, Hermes tried to move all the heavy work to the build time on your powerful developer machine and reduce work on the user device. So we will compile your source in the developer machine. So there is no need for minification and we will generate a intermediate representation called SSA or static single assignment not social security administration, um, <laughs> and, optimize, um, and optimize that IR to some optimized form of the IR. So the key is that we have all the CPU and memory resource to do heavy optimization in your machine. And it's okay to take longer here. Uh, but for JIT engine, they usually have to do that optimization relatively quick since it's on user device and the code has to be executed there just in time. So we will generate a optimized bytecode bundle in the build type and we will ship that bytecode to the user device. So in the runtime, it would be really cheap to just load the bytecode 
it, it's same as how um, a native executable is memory mapped to um, to the memory and execute it. So there is no JIT. Uh, this doesn't mean Hermes can have one, as we mentioned before. It's a deliberate choice that we made uh, for our React Native workload. Yeah, uh, thanks for this explanation. I really love the uh, all the different smaller pieces that you have broken down. I guess that really helps to understand the pipeline. And now, you know, I I, I do wonder why, like, maybe not what is specific about React Native apps that made Hermes possible, but generally speaking, I would assume that. Uh, like after seeing all of this and after hearing all of this, it, it is like quite obvious to me that AOT engine is the way to go. But on the other hand, we still do have like most modern engines uh, such as V8 and, and JSC uh, JIT. And now the question is why? <laughs> I mean, um, why is that? And, and what is what is it so different about React Native apps that you know would make a good use case for AOT then? Yeah, um, this is actually a really hard question. Um, so I would try to cover that. Um, I believe a historical context, like in the first place, was that TTI is really critical to the success of React Native apps, or actually Facebook usage of that. Um, so there was a talk by Eli White, um, in the Facebook a FA developer conference session, uh, talking about the marketplace tab of the Facebook app, which is entirely in React Native. Um, and the issue was that it's uncomfortably slow to load it and, and, and see the first content and being able to interact on a low-end device. I forgot the exact number, but I remember super slow. Uh, so that was the major point that Facebook wanted to solve. Um, so I guess people kind of realize the overhead of JS compilation is huge during the initialization. And people also realize, oh, React Native is very different, say, how the code is distributed to the app is then comparing to deliver distributed uh, JavaScript code to web browser. So I think the first difference is the environmental difference or the how or how the code is delivered. Um, so in React Native app, usually JavaScript code is bundled within the app. And also we have more control of the runtime environment. Um, so, so I guess that's why bytecode pre-compilation makes sense because you can't really ship bytecode to browser. They are different kind of browser using different kind of JavaScript engine and they use different kind of um, bytecode. So you can just you can standardize that. There is a proposal called binary AST and it's trying to standardize how AST can be um, delivered uh, and and help with faster startup, but it's it's still far from being able to ship bytecode directly. Uh, I believe the second major difference would be the workload. Um, so different JavaScript application have very different patterns. Uh, so JavaScript running on web browsers are super diverse. So the engine has to be tuned to be very general purpose. Uh, the JavaScript engine in the browser tend to have multiple tiers of JIT to be able to accommodate that. Uh, JavaScript running on Node.js, however, are usually very server-like. Uh, their lifetime tend to be longer, and they tend to do very repetitive work. Uh, so, and also they need, tend to be running in a very beefy machine, right? So this is an ideal scenario for super highly optimized JIT. Uh, you pay the heavy warm-up cost once, and then you'll just stay with super fast code in the rest of the lifetime. Uh, but JavaScript running React Native apps, in contrast, are usually more ephemeral, uh, ephemeral um, and that's repetitive. So during a lifetime of users interacting with your React Native apps, it's more likely that the user will click different buttons and apply a very different event handlers. So we did some statically 
analysis and realized most of the function in React Native during the startup times are executed between zero or one time. And even after startup, it won't be like a heavy number crunching sort of workload, uh, but more like a periodically reacting to user interaction. So legit doesn't improve the responsiveness there as well. Uh, there is also memory concern as being like usually React Native apps or mobile apps. I've seen people suggesting that for such memory constraint environment, even you are using a JIT capable engine, you might want to turn off its JIT. I, I don't have the full context, but I believe the React Native apps on JavaScript C, a uh, JavaScript core, also doesn't do JIT usually. Yeah, and, and that's actually the thing that we will really get to later because it's not going to be the next question. And uh, and once again, thanks for this uh, very deep explanation. I'm really interested about this um, um, this 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 standard for you know shipping bytecode. I guess you know on the web that could be pretty exciting. So um, you know, thanks for bringing that up.